Get a drink and spangle. Mm-hmm, like a banjo in my foolish castle. Bum, 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 bum. Perfecto. <clears throat> All right. Place. Paint. Two really important things. Hello, Mika. Hello. And niche. I'm doing great, thank you. Um, I am currently about to just start. I'm going to grab some water. We're going to start with blacks today. Here we go. <clears throat> hey, uh, I'm good, thank you. I'm very good. A little bit of gloss gel, guys. Teeny tiny bit. Teeny tiny. Right. I'm going to refill my glass with water and then we'll get started. Give me un momento. I think I might though. Pop this on here. Pop this onto here. Grab this. I'm gonna move this. Yeah, you're gonna come up here. It's all gonna make sense in just a second. Almost. <laughs> hey Jeffrey. How's my water? Lots of water. It's important to have lots. This will stand here. Yes, it will. There we go. It's going to work for us. Is it going to work for us? It is. Fantastic. Oh no, that's in your way. Let's we'll swap that around. Orientation locked. It's a hard life, guys. Give me a second. There we go. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I think we're almost sorted across the board. I'm trying to do something new, guys. You have to bear with me for just a second, Josh. There we go. Now we're talking. I'm trying to set up a little YouTube streamer at the same time as we're doing it on TikTok. And I think I just got it working. It's golden. Right, now, I need to fill up my glass. Um, hello, Scampy Mango. Water. Roman, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Roman. You're an absolute champion. Mike, good to see you. Hope you're looking after yourself. Thank you. It's a hot day today, guys. So we're going for a bit of a change in apparel. And we're here with this fantastic painting again. And we're going to put some layers on it. One layer at a time. Right. There we go. <clears throat> Here we go. All right, black first. Grab a little bit of detail. Just up in the space, guys. I wonder if I shouldn't actually I'll move some of these paintings around a little bit. Pull you a little bit closer, guys. How's that? That's good. That's a good spot to be in. 
Right. Let's add a little bit of black. What's that? Who? <laughs> Jeepers creepers, here we go. Let's add a little bit in here. And then a little bit around here. In this face on here, guys. Once we get this sorted, we can do it however we like. That's good. That's good. That face will start to pop. Hello from Paris. Welcome. Hope you're looking after yourself. There we go. There's a mouth there as well. Let me capture that. There we go. There we go. There's a little bit through here. Perfect. Making steps, guys. Making steps. A little bit at a time. You're from Houston, Texas. Welcome. Um, that is fantastic. Good to be here from Houston. Right, let's look at here. Little dog's ear. Cool. A little bit more through here. Kill, kill, kill. Into this face. Making strides, guys. Oh, Russell, thank you very much for the Kiwi. You absolute champion. I appreciate that. And, uh, huh. Copy time. I'll try and have a, uh, Try and have one glass of water for every glass of coffee I have, and that can sort of balance each other out, which I think is pretty cool. That's the plan, anyway. There we go. Beautiful. Yum, yum, yum. Hello from Chicago. You climbed Camelback Mountain yesterday. Good for you. I don't know where that is, or how high that is, but I'm excited. You, I'm excited you did it. There we go. It's a little bit more through here. I think I'm gonna actually do something quite wild here. We're gonna grab the yeah, super gel heavy gloss. This is what we're after. Arizona. Love your iced tea. Um, let's get a little bit here. This is the tool we're after. A couple of scoops of that. This stuff is heavy gloss gel. <clears throat> it's fun stuff. There we go. Now what this stuff's gonna do. Yeah, that's what we want it to do. Makes the paint thicker and more shiny. It's fun like that. Um would it be weird to wear perfume as a guy? No, it smells good. You do you, bro. You do you. Leap on this face here. Maybe even... Do 
SpongeBob. Yeah, just about. This is what SpongeBob would wear. That's fair. Cool. Sorry guys, just want this face sorted. One little stroke at a time. I didn't know that SpongeBob in his shorts. Yeah, well that is. Here you go. SpongeBob's here guys. Hang out in the shorts. You're welcome. Um, where's the wine? No wine, I'm so sorry. MK, it's a good idea though. I was chatting to Scott, the guy who's got the uh, Scott and Craig painting. He was telling me that he was having wine the other day. I, thought, oh, I should be having wine on the stream. But I'm not. Why is that? It's just silly. It's just silly. Scrumpy Mango? That sounds fantastic. I'm definitely going to get you to paint my dogs. Absolutely. I would love to do that. Dogs are fun. I think no matter how you paint them, they naturally want to have that. Uh, I talk non stop about vibrancy and energy. I think dogs actually naturally want to have that. Or we naturally want to give it to dogs, which is kind of fun. So, big fan of that. There we go, a little bit more of that. So make sure we get this dog sorted. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we do actually guys, we do. We need to make sure this painting has high energy. I'm just using the black at the moment just to make sure we capture some of those areas which would normally need a little bit more detail. So once we've got those areas, then we can grab our colours so we can go wild again. But you need to make sure that you grab those areas and make them look great. Just bring you over here a bit more, guys. There we go. There we go. Just gonna keep spotting a few little bits there. There we go. Fantastic. More down here. Here. Go. 
combine that blue with a little bit of gloss gel. Just a little bit. Hello colleague, Alexander Lilac Art. Hello. Hope you're looking after yourself. Having a great day. All those things. Let's have a look see here. Perfect. Kels are stunning. Thank you so much, Barbara. Appreciate you. This one up a little bit, but we'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. Um, hand wave, oh, thank you. Tutto mondo di tres muito profit. I can't understand that, Ray, but thank you very much. Um, let's grab a little bit of that. I'll overextend that hand a little bit because we'll cut in later on. down here has been underutilized for a while. So we can get in there and sort it out. Just a little bit more of this stuff. Um, you must uh, be selling that piece or are you painting it for someone? That's a great question, Russell. This one's actually been painted for someone. So this one's going to Washington, D.C. Victoria. What'd you miss? Nothing, Victoria. I don't start till you get here. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Appreciate that. Um, no, so you missed nothing, Victoria. We're just uh, building up a little bit of black into the image at the moment. What we're going to do is just try and see if we can't get a bit more shape into a few little areas, and then we'll cut in with a bit of colour. And if that goes well, we'll be closer to the finish line than we think. But that's got to go well. You never know. There we go. Awesome. A little more down here. Thanks, Victoria. Appreciate that. I'm usually turned the other way. Am I? I think we're in the same position we usually are. I don't think anything's changed. I was pretty close though to going down today to the beach, which would have been a wild one, but we skipped that. So, but the idea was there briefly. those areas of black guys. One little black area at a time. Can you do me one please mate? Of course I can mate. If you want one, you've got to reach out. There's a link in the uh, bio. 
So in the bio, there's um, blah, 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 a little thing you click on, and that'll take you through the commissions. And you can go from there, which is pretty cool. Okay, here we go. A little bit more black down here. A little bit more black over here. Now we're talking. There we go. Around the edge. Cool, cool. Maybe some more down here. Maybe some more down here. Thanks, Russell. Appreciate you. <laughs> and thanks, Hewoo. Hewoo. Hector, why did you choose that side today? Is it around the other way, is it? It's wild. Maybe TikTok's reversed it. Because I haven't changed anything. So, who knows? Thanks, Evelyn. Appreciate you. There we go. Just getting some of these colors in here. Creating a bit more shape down in this character. Good morning. How are we doing, Izzy? Pinte, Jack Pinte. Mm. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Um, yeah, here we go. So we're still on the black at the moment, guys. I know that's not as exciting to watch, but the good thing about the black is it's going to create form for the rest of the painting. Without black creating form, we just have a giant mess. Yeah, the dog's pretty fun. There'll be another dog that slowly starts to come into fruition here as well. But at the moment, at this momento, we're spotting everything evenly. Not focusing on people or dog. None of that sort of stuff literally where we see a shape or a tone at the moment sort of medium grey and every time we spot it just adding it here we go cool cool a little bit more over here on the jeans that's fine Why did you put paint on the plate? I love paint on plates. Paint on plates is good. Porcelain doesn't uh, soak the water out of the paint, which is handy. And uh, also, um, you can easily wash a plate. You can get plates from an op shop. There's so many perks to plates, guys. I don't know why they're not used more often, to be honest. Plates are the best. Plates are the very best. The horse painting. The horse painting is going to be absolutely phenomenal. The two horses we did last month. Incredible. Really happy with that one. And we got two ones coming up. One of a singular horse, steering over Montana. And another one of two horses, which I'm really excited about. 
Horses are fun to paint. I've been listening to Susan Boyle's version of uh, Wild Horses recently and I've been absolutely loving it. Big fan. Big fan. Here we go. Cool. Yeah, I'll put more of this around here. Just a little bit. There we go. Cool. It's gonna be a stroke down. Yeah. Fantastic. And a little bit around here. Step by step. Who is the painting for, Seb? Great question, Evelyn. This painting is for one man named Stefan, Stephen. And it's going to Washington, DC for him and his family. I'm a big fan of it because, like I discussed earlier, it's got a really fun composition to it, and so it's great to be able to be here constructing a composition. You don't want to get too much realism in this one. Enough that you can recognize the characters, but then we want to stop. Once you can recognize the characters, we've gone far enough. And then we want to start bringing it back to a stage where you actually can enjoy all the wild paint splashing around the canvas. So that's what we want to get to. I want to put realism in the picture, but not so much that you lose the uh, beauty of the paint. So we're going to do a little dance. A dance between the likeness of the characters and the paint being free and wild. It's going to land somewhere in the middle and it'll be okay. How much would it cost to ship a painting of this size to the States? Well, a painting on a canvas needs to go in a special box. And since it's going in a special box, the box itself, JUC, you're an absolute champion. Oh, <laughs> jeepers. <laughs> JUC, I love you to bits. You're an absolute champion. You know I love you to bits. Um, with the, uh, the, 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 I lost the trail of thought. JC, you took all my attention. I don't know what I was talking about. Someone needs to help me. It's gone. <laughs> um, it was there. Now it's definitely gone. Ah, that's right. Shipping to the States. Okay. So if you want to ship to the States, it's about $1,000 US, roughly. And that includes the box and the shipping. Um, it chops some changes depending on the state and depending exactly where you're going. So it can be iffy. I like the way the kiwi's still jumping there. It's very distracting while I'm trying to talk, actually. I like it. I'll give it a little pat. There we go. If our screen's the same size, I'm patting the kiwi. <laughs> um, my hair does need a haircut. We'll get round to it. Um, and good to see you, by the way, Jay, you see? Hope you're looking after yourself. So shipping to the States. If it's a thinner work, Thinner works typically cheaper because it's done off volume. The box that protects it, they're about $200, but it'll make sure that the canvas is going to arrive to you. The last thing you want to happen is for the canvas to arrive with a stretched surface. I mean, like something's pushed against it and damaged it. It needs to arrive safely. So it can be anywhere between about 600 to 1,000 US, depending on the size. But the best thing to do is get in touch with me about what size you're after 
and whereabouts in the states you live. And I can give you an exact quote, which is always better than just a wild guess on numbers. Haha, <laughs> finally done. JC, this one's not finally done just yet. There's a lot more to add to it, but um, it's in a fun place. Hey, yeah, how you doing? It's in a fun place at the moment. Right, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. The other thing you can do too is some people will order two pieces at once and they can go in the same box. So then you save on the box and you save on the shipping because although it's still done off volume, the box is a lot of polystyrene which protects the artwork. So you basically halve all of that. So sometimes two at once can be handy. But then you need two locations to put them at the exact same time, which makes it tougher. Um, What's that there? Can you come to Orlando and create a painting for you? Scott, of course I can. Of course I can. But we need an idea first. We need an idea. We need to figure out what you like, what you don't like, what size you want. So reach out via the link in the bio and we can work it all out. Figure out what's possible. My Zell. I love to fit today, the light view of the navy looks good. Thanks, myself. Good to have you here, by the way. Always a pleasure to have you joining in, myself. Here we go. I'm gonna sneak a little bit down here. Right down here. There we go. I might even breach into it just a little bit. Oh. Mm, purple? Mm, not quite. Probably. Probably. Yeah, we want this green. This is a great idea. Owner of King Bucci. That's a great question. So. If you are after a commission, the best thing to do, there's a lot of factors come into it, shipping, size. Um, so the best thing to do is reach out by the link in the bio. Show me the picture you're after, the size you're after, where you live, in a non-creepy way. And I can get you an up-to-date and accurate shipping quote. So this painting here, Ooh, it's in it's about it's uh, seventh hour I think I think but all the stuff all the uh, time we spend on the painting with actual brush strokes there's time in between little things that are too boring to show but the uh, the actual paint on canvas part is about seven hours at the moment But you lose track of time a little bit, guys. So, forgive me if you tally up the YouTube videos and I'm vastly incorrect. Where do you find the link, Scott? So if you go into my bio on TikTok, there's a link there called a link tree. Click that and that'll take you everywhere you want to go. Let me know if it works for you. I tried to make it as simple as possible, but it does catch, um, it does catch people out frequently. So there's a better way to do it. Someone should let me know, because I'm open to change. Here we go. Go. A bit more here. I'm splash this around here. Just build this up a little bit. Now we're talking.
Here we go. Step by step. Thanks, Russell. Appreciate you. Let's get just a little bit more of this. This uh, makes the paint wetter, makes it spread better. It's good stuff. Here we go. There we go. I'm gonna spread a bit more over here. The green stands out and it pops, that's the idea. Let's get some poppy green on this picture. There we go. A little bit more over here. Here we go. Coming down here. There it is. Perfect, perfect. How many years have you been painting JW? Ever since I was a teeny weeny tiny tacker. Got this tool. Now, um, how can we put, I'll get onto that in just a second. Um, in terms of painting though, ever since I was tiny and my mother noticed that actually I should be painting, she was very analytical mind, she had a lot of math and um, she pushed me into a lot of opportunities and things that I wouldn't have otherwise pursued, which gave me a good early start. Lucky me. Um, in terms of buying a painting, there's currently nothing available online. The reason why there's nothing available online is I'm down to my last four works, guys, and I get precious about the last four. I wanna hold on to them. And so, since I'm holding on to them, if you'd like to have a look at my last four pieces, I can send you pictures of them. Just message me on Instagram or via the link in the bio, wherever and I'll send you through some shots. But otherwise, there is one more spot next month open for a commission. And then we're on to April. So, if you would like some art and you're tempted, then reach out and let's do a commission together. Even if you don't have an idea of what you're after right now, maybe talking going through some of the pictures that are significant to you in your life and maybe we zoom in on a certain part, maybe we take inspiration from that and run in another direction, who knows? But um, I know what can't hurt, the conversation. We should just have that. Eveline, I've always wanted to be an artist, always. There was a brief period when I was a young tacker where I'd get inspired by the idea of uh, running off and becoming a scientist. Maybe dinosaurs or a geologist when I was five. But now I'm just definitely 100% in love with art. Um, favorite painting style? Exactly what I'm doing right now. Which is a real privilege be able to paint just how you like to in your art craft. Sometimes perhaps we make compromises on how we'd like to make the art, but this is how I like to make it, so it's fantastic. Joshua, hello. Here we go. Put this in 
Thanks, guys. How can I send you a pic of my dogs? I want to quote for pain. Of course, Scampy Mango. So if you go into the uh, link in the bio and click on commission, the last question will ask you to attach files. You can send them through there. Or, if that's a little too tough, you can go straight onto Instagram and just send me a message there and attach the images. And I'll get in touch as soon as I can. If you don't mind me asking, now the spotlight's on you. What sort of dogs do you have? Which breed? Well, you will miss you. Gotcha. I don't have a self portrait. It's too fun capturing everything else out in this big world, guys. Boston Terriers. Is that your dogs, is it? Fantastic. The Thai green, oh yeah. So we're just gonna add a bit of the green around, guys. There's a lot of greenery in the image. I don't want the green to take control of the image, but I want it to be an undertone there. At least, ever so slightly in the plants because if it's underlying inside the plants then at least there's a small small taste of reality inside some of the areas of the painting bounce a lot of green around it. See where it takes us. Can't do it. Just taking that off so it can actually sit flat, which is important. Mark? Welcome. Good to have you with us, Mark. See you on Discord. Mark, if you don't mind me asking, where are you from? Mark. Hi, Mark. Hola. LJ, welcome, UK, United Kingdom, well Mark, welcome, pleasure to have you here, and you're an absolute champion for showing support, love you to bits, hello L, is that LJ, that's LJ, LJ, Mountain below. So, the temptation right now, guys, is to start spotting areas. My name is Linda. You can call me LJ. Okay, I like that, Linda. I'll work with both. Linda when I remember, and LJ when I read the name. That's a good deal. Hey y'all, welcome. My first name starts with an L and my last name starts with a J. This is true, Logan. That's Logan? That's Logan, all right. Proud of you, Logan. 
Not many people can say that. There we go. Thanks guys, appreciate that. consistent layers, the dog's eventually going to pop out. Australia, fantastic. The coolest thing about Australia, and fantastic scrampy, is it? Scrampy mango, that's fantastic. I look forward to seeing them. The fantastic thing about Australia is shipping's far less, so it makes life a lot easier. Which breed is the other dog? Uh, oh, golden retriever, and I think a chocolate Labrador, but I'd just be guessing. Oh. Just slip on that there. There we go. Golden retriever and a chocolate lab. Yeah, let's really get wild with this uh, with this tiger and see where we can take it. We go around the sides of the canvas, do our homework. There we go. Perfect. That. What I do want right now, guys, is some blue. Some real punchy blue. I want to start painting, but I'm intimidated. What would you recommend? Acrylic for watercolor to start? Acrylic or watercolor to start? I'd recommend a acrylic. But I'm biased. And I think the biggest thing you need to know is when you say you're intimidated and you're wondering how to start, there's really no wrong answer. Buy paint, brushes and a surface that are within your budget. And then, just start. It's like dancing. When the music comes on, just enjoy it. Dance the way you like. But uh, you'll see a million different options on Amazon. And honestly, I should pick out a few for you guys. Um, to simplify it, but in short, you can't really go wrong. Once you learn more and get the hang of it, thanks Russell, appreciate you. Once you learn more of it and get the hang of it, then you can start getting picky about your paints, what brush shape and size you like, and go from there. But when you're starting, those things are irrelevant. What you need to be doing is doing and testing. And you can do that with literally anything. Process for a painting? Seven to 10 hours, but sometimes it takes 30. Sometimes it takes three. It's really hard to know. Um, it really depends on your ability to get the paint to land in the right places. Sometimes you nail it and sometimes you don't. It's like sport, you don't always kick the goal. Um, I think I instantly muted him the other day, it was my bad. I want to delete a comment, but I accidentally muted him for the entire day, so that was my <laughs> Oh, Shelby, you getting the hang of it? That's good.
For anyone who doesn't know, Shelby should be working right now. But she's here, which is compelling. Thank you so much for the rose, appreciate you. Um, and also JEC, if you're not a subscriber, that's all good, but let me know, because then I can invite you to the Discord, because I'd like to share updates and ideas with you. Hi, Shelby. <laughs> Hello, Ivan. Good to have you here, mate. Hope you're looking after yourself, Ivan. the flowers paintings. Ooh, that's good to hear Joshua. I'm just gonna move this one over here. I think that's an improved angle. Here we go. I'm just spinning around the switch a little bit more. I've got a um I've got two going on at the moment. We've got a lovely little YouTube stream going and we have our TikTok one going. Just to see how YouTube live works. Don't worry guys. I'm not going to bail on you. I just wanted to see the menu. See what another streaming service had to offer. Hello, JMS. Good to have you here, JMS. Hope you're looking after yourself. Pink, welcome. Um, no, I just like using a plate, guys. It's my style. Let me do me. Um, I can't believe more people don't use plates. I think it's far superior to any other option out there. You use planes too? Fantastic. Just relaxing on a Sunday afternoon. JMS, I am jealous. You absolute champion. You have a glass of wine in hand? If you do, even more so. Scott was having me on about that. Scott's the man in the uh, Scott and Craig painting. And Scott's messaging me, messaging me saying he was having a wine the other day. I think while I was on the stream, which is kind of funny. Um, a full glass, this is true. Guys, I know I get tired of recommending it the whole time. Sorry, you guys are tired of hearing it the whole time, but drink water, guys. Water's good for you. Mark, do you do other kinds of painting for fun? Painting miniatures? A couple of my friends paint miniatures and they love it. But no, I don't often do it. I like to style, though. Normally I'll paint wild uh, boards, abstract, have some fun. You know, not canvas, not building up costs, just having some fun on some boards, wasting some paint. I missed one there, sorry. Not yet, but by evening I will. All right, good for you. Have at it. Yeah. Me and Shelby had a bit much fun this weekend, so we will not be partaking in the glass of wine. Shelby got hit by some bad migraines. Um, I missed you, Sid. Oh, thank you very much. Kai the Kaida? Kaida? Missed you too. Glad you're back. Okay. There we go. A little bit more up here. A little bit more over here. How'd you learn to paint? No wine. How did I learn to paint? I learned to paint in, well, I guess you start when you're really young. I think your parents have the most power over that. 
getting your arts and crafts, little supplies, little fun how-to kits, all those little things. Um, and then once you're older, things like uh, high school, things like art school, your peers, what you do in your spare time, these all uh, construct your style. And we're part of the story of how you learn to paint. That's what I reckon. I must confess, I still believe. That's good, Joshua. I'm not sure what you're believing in, but I'm happy for you. Sounds positive. Sounds like a net positive. JMS, I brought the system today to hang the painting. You absolute champion, JMS. This is fantastic news. This is fantastic. Now, I told you the other day, and I've lied. I told you I have a tracking number to you by later of the day. I haven't done that, but I plan to have one through to you today. So, it's gonna be all set up and ready, and out it goes to you. I'm excited, I'm very excited. I held it back because I wanted to grab a proper photo of it before I sent it. And it's just taken a little bit longer than I thought it was going to. But I'll get you sorted. And I appreciate your patience, James. It's fantastic. Britney Spears? I missed the comment about Britney Spears, but... I was watching a Pepsi commercial the other day with Britney Spears in it from about 20 years ago and it was phenomenal, big fan. You use one brush with all the colours, so how do you get the colour you want? That's a great question. Uh, Katrin. So, because we're applying the paint really thick, no holes barred, means that actually when we swap to a new colour, the new colour quickly overpowers the previous one. And so, although a few strokes will have a slight mixture, amalgamation of colour, overall, the new colour will just dominate. There we go. Just like that. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. No worries at all. I'm excited but not impatient. That's a good way to be JMS. Like in life in general, I like your style. Um, I can't read the other languages, but Matt B. <laughs> Cheers Matt B. Let's keep building this color out. Oh, that's not the right color. Here we go. Now we're talking. We're gonna put down this tray now, guys. This tray's actually getting a little bit dry. There's definitely a temptation to keep painting, keep painting the same tray. But the more you use it, the more you'll get stuck. Because what's gonna happen is you're slowly gonna have your mediums drying onto the porcelain. And so then when you start mixing too much, it's gonna pull off little chunks and it'll change the texture. I might have cracked my ribs yesterday. It hurts to laugh. What happened yesterday? Oh, no, I think you're all right. I think you're all right. You probably just extra stretched out. I think you'll be fine. Um, hello? Vasia Spears. Vasia Spears, welcome. Um, let's have a look see here. I need my ring. Raw cinnamon and crimson. Close enough. Now, wipe that off there. Perfect. Now we're going for raw sienna. 
I like this colour. It's just light brown, but it's named really effectively. Are you a fan of Picasso style paintings? Of course I am. Big fan. I like what he does. Looks like there's some people on. <laughs> Let's have a look in here. Let's add just a little bit. Mm. And we're going to add a little bit of this. <sighs> no, we'll hold fire on this one. We're going to use gloss gel instead. Here we go. Brilliant. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. Ivan. I'll see you later, Ivan. Thank you so much for joining in. Appreciate you. So you can typically, when you start one of these paintings, guys, you get yourself a little bit caught up in the tightness of these brush strokes. We don't want that. You'll feel it in the way you're painting. It'll start contracting and not actually uh, the style, figuratively speaking. It'll start, you'll just start choking it and demanding paint to fall in certain places and you'll lose that playfulness that the paint needs to have to really enjoy being paint. And so, one thing that I'm focusing on in this layer, more than the previous layers, is embellishing this painting with that playfulness and letting the work really get back to a stage where it's not trying to be too serious, where it's just having fun, where it's just actually saying, I'm paint, I'm just here to play. Um, <laughs> here we go. A little bit through here. Now we're talking. Just gonna build this up a little bit. Now it's always good to put the red into the faces. But don't ever get too excited with your red. You chuck too much red into a face, they don't look sunburned. Every other colour is fine, but red's a dangerous one. So we're going to add it as much as we need it, but try not to overdo it. Here we go. Now it's all in. That face will start coming out piece by piece. Thanks, Neil. Appreciate you. Do you ever add texture or objects to your art? Wood pieces, newspaper, bubble wrap, etc. Jamie, I don't often have to. If I thought it would improve the art that I was currently making, I'd add anything to it. No holes barred. But typically with paint and with the mediums that I've got, I can construct almost all the effects that I'd want to have. And since I can do that, I don't need to resort to bark or sand and things like that. That being said, I don't need to take away from anyone who does use those things. They're fantastic. And go for it. But I haven't been in a situation yet where I needed to. What's my height? <laughs> I'm not a big guy, guys. I'm 5'9", I think. I forget. JC. <laughs> JC. I love you to bits, mate. 
And it's an absolute pleasure to have you here. You know that. And, uh, and thank you for everyone, JEC, but everyone for all the support you give for these lives because it does make it fantastic. It makes it, uh, makes it a real thrill to get up and paint in the morning. It makes it a real thrill to actually be pursuing this craft. Um, and cheers to you all. Cheers to JEC, you're an absolute legend, mate. Um, I can't quite read the comment at the moment because it's all just little Kiwi who's just doing its thing. No, Nurse DJ, you're far, far taller than me. I'm tiny. <laughs> Hi, guys. I'm left handed. So. Left handed. Thank you. Appreciate you. There we go. This soup down here, it's in a funny space. It doesn't have the definition we want it to have, but it's not far off being perfect. It's funny how just five or 10 brush strokes can change something from being something that you don't like into being something quite special. And so you've always got to keep giving things a chance. And in this case here, we're giving the suit a chance. Will you paint my boys in acrylic or oil? It's a great question. We'll use acrylic. Now, there's this age-old question between acrylic and oil, and which one's better? Ignore that, guys. This is no longer the thing. Paints are so high quality now, at the top range, top range of them, that there's very little distinction between what's the best thing to be using. Typically, oil has more of a poppy color after it dries, and it dries exactly as it looked when you applied it. Acrylic, will dry a little bit more matte and won't stay the exact same shade. Usually it'll dry a little bit darker. But with compounds that you can add into the paint, if you look at this little tray here, see I'm using this white one here. Compounds that you add into the paint, you can develop more textures and more sheens and colors and uh, vibrancy or lack of vibrancy with acrylic than you can with oil. Um, but oil doesn't dry as fast. So with oil, you can come back the next day and continue painting exactly where you left off because the paint's all still wet, but acrylic dries almost instantly. Now that's fun if you're trying to build multiple layers like we are, but with oil, if I was doing it in oil, I'd have to say, all right, you can have painting, I'll see you in 15 months. <laughs> um, so they're both, they're both good in their own different ways. Um, yeah, so I hope that answers the question. I use acrylic because I like to do multiple layers and build them up quite rapidly, and so I need the paint to dry rapidly. Um, but in terms of an actual uh, using it for a craft, they're as good as each other. If you're wanting to work on the same layer for 15, 20 hours, you'll need oils because you'll need to have the paint still wet and versatile. For me, the moment I've touched the canvas, I want the paint to be dry. So, it very much depends on your preference. I hope that answers the question. Um, I went to art school, Catherine. I went to Polytech at art school and high school. And I actually ended up finishing though, not with a fine arts degree. I finished with a bachelor, uh, sorry, a art history degree. So in the late years, I saw into the theory of art. And honestly, I loved it to bits. I think it's funny, in later years, the deeper understanding of the theory of art actually allowed me to understand where I wanted to go with art much more. Um, I would have just been a firework heading off in any direction and exploding had I not had this, the background of knowledge to understand how and why I want to do what I do. How many layers do you typically apply to your portraits? It's going to be a real cop-out answer and it's going to be incredibly unhelpful for you. But as many as I need to. Sometimes that's two. 
and sometimes that's 20. What I'm looking for is that moment where the subject's actually been represented, that there's a likeness of the, likeness of the subject combined with the wild primal nature of paint. I want to marry those two things up. And sometimes you're thinking the likeness isn't quite there. And sometimes you're thinking that the actual primal wild paint isn't quite there. And so it's this constant juggling act to get them to marry up in the middle. Red Ruby, the sleeve. Is that a movie? I haven't seen it. Here we go. And also, well, I'm just here painting, guys. Huge thank you to some of the amazing people who help us make this little environment what it is. That's Victoria, that's Cheryl, that's Lucy, that's MJ, that's Nurse DJ, T, thank you so much, T. A lot of amazing people, guys. So, I'd say the average amount of layers is around seven. I think the paintings that come out looking the best stop the layers at around five to six. Five to six is perfect. But at the end of the day, Every painting's unique in its own little way. And every painting's on its own little journey. And so, it's okay if some paintings take 30 layers. And it's okay if some of them take two. As long as they're all heading in the same direction and trying to achieve the same result, it really doesn't matter how they, sorry, what it takes to get them there. That's what I reckon. Um, so the reference picture's in black and white. How do you know what colours to use? Um, Tim? Probably, a degree of it is to go with the flow. And I say that, as you're building the painting, you'll see colours that you want to see in there. Instinctually, you'll think, I want to see green. I want to see purple. I want more of a sage to come out at the end. Now the funny thing is, the colours we start with won't be the colours we finish with. So even right now inside this painting, we start to see those greens and those blues and those magentas and purples start to take over the canvas. Now if you're here at the start, hello from, ooh, Uguwe, welcome. Um, you'll see at the start we started with a lot of yellow. Now the yellow's still in there, but it's being pushed to the back slowly as layer one becomes more distant and these future layers take more control. Now, towards the end, we're going to probably move into an environment that has more blues and greens in it. Um, but it's hard to tell at this stage. Um, I still love to know who the long hair and the pick above. Oh, this is, uh, this is Steve. So Steve is our server painter. <clears throat> and we will move on to Steve very soon. So when we move on to Steve, that picture will become very relevant. Are the colours going to change and become more real? <clears throat> so, that's an interesting question. Because your use of the word real would depict, would, and can't, would uh, the use of the word real would be like, will it look more like the photo? If that's what we're after, then the answer is probably no. But if we say, are the pain, are the colors going to change to increase the likeness of these individuals? Then yes, because our pursuit with this paint is just to capture likeness, not reality. Because sometimes the two things are mutually exclusive. Are those acrylic paints or oil paints? These are acrylic paints, but it's a question because you've got a perceptive eye, you'll be wondering why the acrylic paints are behaving like oils. And it's because I'm mixing a lot of compounds into them. I want to have the feeling of oils with the dry times of acrylic. 
And so that's how we do that. With all my little tricks. My little stack of chemicals down here that allow me to mix it in different ways. Chemicals more like compounds, but uh, I've got a stack. Hello Cobb. Welcome to the stream. I missed you, Cobb. Rex, hello. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Um, and thank you, Jesse. Appreciate that. The outfit's pretty awesome. Yeah, they're coming together pretty fun. I love the way that there's a unique character between what they're wearing. This one here currently needs the most time or work put into it. And part of the reason why this one's changed a little bit is the angle to paint on is further down, whereas these are right in front of me. And so we have to do a concerted effort to make sure we get down into this corner and we add all the detail that we want to add into it. That's going to be important. Um, why does everyone know how tall I am? Because for some reason people keep asking. And so I keep answering. But I was having this conversation with Shelby the other day. Everyone gets so excited about six foot, six foot five. This is silly. This is very silly. If you're this tall, you buy a plane ticket and you have a very uncomfortable journey. At about five, nine and down, you fit perfectly into an airplane seat or a bus seat. And so transport for you is very easy. You get to the next location, very rejuvenated. Now, if you ever go going traveling, you've got to look at someone who's six foot nine or like, stuff and think, hmm, you're going to struggle to travel well. You're going to reach the other side and be very jet lagged, not be fun to be around for the first three days. It's going to be a big issue. But you've got to look at someone who's five foot and be like, they can practically spin around sideways and sleep in that seat. Good travel buddy, if you ask me. Yeah. <laughs> now, obviously, being able to reach the top shelf Cool, that's important. But at the same time, it's pretty fun to be able to travel well. So, depends what your preferences are. No major knee problems. Carry less weight means you carry less weight. Well pointed out actually, I think. That is a good observation. Good way to look at it. Yeah, yeah. I think we do try and go on an angle where we try and pursue or find out the best answer for something. But at the end of the day, I think that Star Wars gives you the best example of it. That only a Sith works in absolutes. And actually everything's a little bit more of a gray area. Listen to Obi-Wan Kenobi guys. <laughs> Thanks guys. It's all about perspective and facts and time. Yeah, but remember, as soon as you've got a definitive answer, you're on the wrong side. If you've got a grey area, it's a good place to be. I'm serious though, like, a lot of the time in your life, if you're sitting there saying, nah, this is the way it is, you got to let Obi-Wan's words speak through your mind. Only a Sith deals like that. It's always, it's always a grey area. That's what I reckon anyway. <laughs> Thanks, Yudi. Appreciate you. So this paint's going on a wee bit thinner. In previous layers, but it's going to add those color tones into it. 
we've got lots of colour in the picture at the moment, but we don't have that depth that, um, that when you come up close to it, you can see 16 colours dancing and bouncing around each other. From a distance, it pops, it looks great. But up close, we also need to have its own character. And uh, we get that from multiple slightly transparent layers that build one after the other. I missed that. Sorry, Matt. Um, you could say with your painting, there is no way to try. There is no try, only do. Well, honestly, it's interesting you say that. I think there is no do, there's only try. I think, um, I think every painting, if you flick through a book of uh, Monet's paintings of his landscapes, I don't think there's a whole lot of doing in there. I just think there's a whole lot of trying. Um, and that's not to take away from Monet's work, that's to add to it. Because if it was just do and done, then there's less excitement and less um, journey in that. But if you believe that every painting Monet is making, he's trying, he's experimenting, he's figuring out new things as he's on this journey and you're joining him on it, that's much more compelling. So, don't do, try. Um, that's correct. That is correct. Now what we're going to do, guys, we're going to grab these two colours that I've got, which is our reddish magenta and our burnt sienna. And we're going to swap briefly. Swapping painting is always a good thing to do, guys. Um, keeps your mind fresh. One second, guys. Back to this fun little painting, big fan. It's 11.35 p.m. here, I need to be up for work at seven. It's a pleasure as always. All right, Mark, what a pleasure. Look after yourself. And I will see you when I see you. Thanks for joining in. All right, this one here is a fresh painting. So this is layer one. Layer one, we've grabbed a few colours, in this case baby blue, dark blue, magenta, more of a violet actually, and black. That's been our colour palette, and we've just thrown it on there. There's still some areas where raw canvas is coming through. And in all honesty, they might survive till the end of the painting. But, um, to make sure it wasn't just raw canvas, we've added some clear, gesso gel into it which actually protects the canvas so if we leave raw canvas maybe it's appropriate to leave it in some spots um, it'll still be there looking great <laughs> cheers guys right now the colors we're going to add to this wave are unorthodox we're going to come back with our blues and our light blues and make the wave the correct colors but underneath it the wave needs light and vibrancy now, it's currently got movement, and it's already a slightly vibrant painting, but we need life under that wave, and life comes from colour. Is there anything I hate painting? No. No, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to painting, guys, if you're recognising things as shapes and tones, and not faces, noses, eyes, feet and hands, then there is really nothing. <laughs> oh, thanks James. I'm sure every time someone comments, <laughs> turn into a drinking game tip. Now, um, there is no, uh, 
that's in the right spot there. There we go. If you, as long as with impressionism painting, you're not getting hung up on what you think you see. Then you only stand to win. Um, you only stand to not get bothered by it. Ooh, that's a hand, that's my mortal enemy. I better paint that correctly, you know? So now we're embellishing these lower coats with all the colour we can imagine. Before we bring back those blues, we're going to turn this wave into a rainbow. Make no mistake. And if we can make elements of this wave, small little pockets and areas, not look like a wave as much as it does just this turbulent thing full of volume and energy and movement, then that's perfect. We'll run with that. Here we go. Beautiful. talking. Perfect. I know I said I wasn't going to touch these sides guys, but with painting, I've changed my mind. I think it's going to look much cooler on the sides. Not always does it do this, but on this particular painting, the way the wave looks and with the energy of its movement, I think it's going to look far better with the sides covered. Thanks, uh, the Ankun, the Ankun. And thanks, Mike, appreciate you. When you decide what colors to use on each canvas, um, I chop and change probably when I start a canvas I'll start with black and then use the three primaries yellow, blue and red once I've added yellow, blue and red I'll see what for this particular painting needs to actually go into it to make it pop. In this painting's case, we've done our blues. You can now see me adding the reds to this wave. And then we'll bring in the yellows. And once the yellows have come into it, then we'll pick a color to really send. And in this one's case, I think it will be three or four shades of blue. Jamie, no. But that might change. Here we go. Beautiful. Nice. I'm gonna keep going with these reds, guys. Just gonna keep filling in the areas. Same story though, we're making sure the paint's going on flat. We're not ready just yet to let that texture get too thick. Not just yet guys, we'll get there, but not just yet. Now the other thing too, 
is the face of the man on this wave. We're taking the similar body shape, similar body, but the face itself, we're changing to be Steve's. So, we're doing a little tweak there. Yes, Tim, definitely. So most of these works do ship to the US. I love the States, Tim. Um, and hey, hey, Bridge, welcome. Uh, so, in terms of shipping to the States, I'd love to do that. And we can definitely ship there, UK, Europe, um, Australia. I'm slowly ticking off states, one after the other. So, we've done Washington, Chicago, New York, Pennsylvania. Washington, Chicago, New York, Pennsylvania. Washington, DC, Chicago, New York, Pennsylvania. Yeah, the New York a few times, but it'd be cool It'd be cool to slowly take off all the states. So if you're from a different state, I'd love that. There we go. Just turning his body slowly. More red, but it's okay. Suits him. And plus, his darker colors really make the surfer pop against that darker background. Jamie, of course, we can do Canada. If you're in, I haven't sent any to Canada. Oh no, I sent one work to Canada. One work's gone to Canada. But honestly, another few would be pretty cool. <laughs> Cheers, Rich C. Arizona. Serena, that's fantastic. Well, unfortunately this painting here has an owner. This painting has been long awaited. And it's going to a guy named Steve. Steve's fantastic, guys. He's an absolute legend. So there's a couple of pictures of Steve here, that you can see. One's up high, this is Steve. And this is a wave here, big barreling wave. And we're gonna combine Steve onto this wave. Now Steve's an avid surfer. It's important though, to remember that when Steve was younger, smashing these big waves, the camera wasn't always around. So, in a funny way, this is one of the biggest realism paintings we've made because we're capturing a moment which doesn't exist on a camera. So we're gonna make it happen with paint. And that's pretty special. Thanks guys. Oh yes, you are, you are right, you are right. Well actually it's funny because Chicago has five million people in it. Around about. Now the population that size in Chicago, you've got about the same amount in Chicago as we have in New Zealand overall. So with that in mind, it's hard for us not to see Chicago at its own individual pace, place. Here we go. Just stand back for a moment. sitting in a good place grab a bit more down the bottom here let's see where that takes us here we go I'm going to leave the paint on too thick and keep making sure it's spread out in there And then around this board, I'm just going to sneak down here, guys. 
What's the best thing about living in New Zealand? Well, it's funny. If you asked me yesterday, first today, my answer's gonna change. Because one of my favourite things about New Zealand is coffee. But guys, I'm making an effort. I'm gonna cut back on my coffee intake. It's gonna take effort. It's gonna be incredibly hard. And you're not gonna replace it with a ridiculous amount of water. Can't wait. So I'll let you know how I go. But we're doing a reduction on coffee and a reduction on. Uh, so, reduction on coffee at the moment is the big one. That's where the work's going in, guys. And I'll let you know how we go. Hold me accountable. Um, what states have I been to? I've been to all the states. It's not even an exaggeration, guys. I've been to all of them. Loved every single one of them. The states are an amazing place. It was a real privilege to go there. I wouldn't take back the time I spent there for the world. Loved every second of it. Give me just a second here. Just gonna get some more up on the side here. There we go. We're just gonna come the whole way down. You can watch and see reaching the bottom here. One paint stroke at a time. There we go. Almost there. A little bit more. Down to the very bottom. We need a halo around a little bit there. There we go. A little bit more. Perfect. I'm going to sneak around the front. A little bit more there, there we go. Perfect. Fantastic. Spreading their work out of the canvas. You're right. Um, how long does it take to complete one art piece? Chops and changes. Chops and changes. This one here is in a really fun space. We'll just keep adding to it and building it out. But the problem is, you think to yourself, right, that'll only take another two or three layers, one layer. Or, I plan to finish that one tomorrow. And then, <laughs> you put that expectation on yourself. Suddenly you can't get the paint to land in the right place. And you end up further away when you were so close to finishing and you wonder what happened. So, it's my birthday. Can you say, happy birthday for me, please? Of course I can. Happy birthday for me. Look after yourself. Amanda, do you know what kind of frame you'll use for this portrait yet? Or does it come later? So, depending on the work, with these canvases, I don't like to add a frame to them. I like to keep them raw. Frames are great, but with a canvas that's thick enough, you can get a lot of um, uh, paint around the sides and show off the fact that you've actually got a canvas and it'll present it to people, tips for it to present to people. Um, if you've got a photo, photos do well with frames because a photo is flat, so the frame adds volume to the picture. You've got the volume already. So if you go around the sides with enough pretty paint, then actually you can improve your work a whole lot and actually add more to it. Think of it in a hallway where the painting, you can't see the front of it yet, but you can see the side. That could either just be a frame of wood or it can be paint alluding to what's gonna be on the front face. It can add a whole lot to it. So, depending on what you do on the sides, can add. Um, I think some people get hung up on thinking they need to uh, paint sides one flat color. They'll do it, say, entirely in black, 
the whole way around. You can do that. The choice is yours. But there's a missed opportunity there. Think of how cool it can look if the Kelly you add to the front face sneaks around the sides. That could be quite fun. You are magnificent. <laughs> Thank you very much, Steve. Appreciate you. We're going to add in some of that sienna. I'm going to mix it with a little bit of white when we go. That's going to sneak in this middle area where our greys are currently sitting. And once I've done that, the next thing to do is going to be to grab the yellows. So that's pretty exciting. Oh, look at that. Barmy, you're getting wished happy birthday all over the show. You lucky individual. We're going to add a little bit of this one. There we go. You've got 50, 36 deli artworks in Chicago. It's pretty special. It's pretty special. Salvador Dali. What a guy. So this painting here, this work here, this is just right guys, this paint's going on just right. Hasn't got texture in it, but it's spreading itself across the canvas really effectively. This is exactly how we want it to go. So we can use this to capture all the energy in the work. Typically, if we're using paint that's too dry, we can't capture that movement or that energy. The canvas just tends to beat the paint. We don't want that. We want the canvas to complement the paint. Not control it. Oh, thanks, Hector. You absolute champion. <laughs> thanks, Tim. Yeah. So I try to make sure when we do these lives together, I try and be as relaxed and as authentic as possible, guys. The reason for that is the opportunity to paint here is, one second, just going to creep around the sides a little bit there. This is where I fill my glass, so when I talk about filling your cup up and rejuvenating yourself, that happens to me through paint. Now, if I come to where I fill my cup up and I pretend to be someone I'm not during that time, um, now I'm pouring. You can't fill out a cup from an empty cup. So. But I hope that this random Kiwi here doing his thing on the stream in the middle of nowhere makes you feel like you've got permission to be yourself today or tonight. I'm not sure where in the world you are. You will be from all over the show. Thanks, Thomas. You absolute legend. Appreciate the support. And Michael, thank you. saying guys this paint this paint is flowing just the way we want it to this is a lot of the time 
when I'm looking at the compounds we're using, paint colours, what needs to go on the canvas. I'm trying to think of ways to make the paint flow like this paint is currently flowing. This is excellent. And I'm glad it's happening with one of these softer colours. Because it's going to add so much more depth and complexity to the work. <laughs> Cheers, Michael. Um, no question is done, it's how we learn. See, that's a funny one. They always say that no question is done. There's no such thing as a dumb question. I think we get, I think that's the wrong way around, guys. I think we say no question is a dumb question because, well, I think there are dumb questions. I think there are. I think you can ask a dumb question. I think the saying should be, it's okay to ask a dumb question. Um, if you ask a dumb question, what's wrong with that? Um, so on one level, it's okay to ask a dumb question. And on the other level, um, I know it might sound dumb, but what's the color called when there is, what's the color called when there's no color? Um, that's called turning the op opacity right down to zero <laughs> in Photoshop, but I'm not quite sure what you'd call that. A vacuum of color? Um, I don't quite know. But um, along with that saying, the other thing I'd say too is no matter the question, try and give a good answer. There's that statement that goes around every now and again, and I don't like it, which is a dumb question deserves a dumb answer. That doesn't strike me as incredibly helpful. Because um, sometimes the wrong question can get the right answer. So if you answer, if you answer a conceivably dumb question with a dumb answer, it sounds like you've prevented the ability for either person to get the right answer to whatever question they did want to get an answer to. And if I'm losing you, don't worry, I've already lost myself. Demo. First off, Demo, welcome to the stream. Hope you're looking after yourself. Um, this would be called Impressionism. But at the same time, Impressionism can be so many things. So let's throw primalism in there too. Primalism is trying to create something with the use of rudimentary tools. And in today's world, with NFTs, with digital art, with AI art, all these wild things out there, picking up a paintbrush, using paint, and stretching a canvas, and painting onto a canvas, this is this is not cutting edge this is rudimentary and so as much as we want to we want to bring this process back to a rudimentary place because in my mind with art if we can bring it back to its most raw and primal state we can find something that today we might be short of um, and that's not to take anything away all the fantastic technologies and things we have these days but in this situation we're looking to actually form a relationship with something more primal and expressive innately within us and to do that I like to use these rudimentary tools I think that gets me closer than I could get with digital art But you may find me in two years using a tablet. I'll be like, you know what, guys, I changed my mind. <laughs> um, do you remember your first commission? Oh. Do I remember my first commission? No, I don't. I don't remember my first commission. I remember my first commission to the US. But in New Zealand? No. I do not. My first commission to the US 
was Beethoven. So that was the first time I'd shipped beyond Oceania, which was really special. And thanks, DJ. Appreciate that. Um, those AI robots are absolutely incredible with what they can do. And my favourite thing about that picture is they were given art from the stream. So that's a photo made from all the photos during his lives, which I reckon is pretty wholesome. Yes, Josh. Someone get what Josh is saying, put it on a t-shirt. That's exactly correct. That's what we're trying to do. You've hit the nail on the head. There's no way I could say what Josh just said better myself. Well done, mate. And in here a little bit. <laughs> That's phenomenal, Demo. I'd love to do that for you. subtle gradient changes there's a temptation to go faster but just because the color doesn't pop against the colors around it it doesn't mean you get the opportunity to add it as if it didn't matter those subtle changes are sometimes just as beautiful as those bigger overarching sweeping changes so we'll try and appreciate that shortly but we've seen so much that we can do with this regular sienna at the moment but we might swap shortly in fact we'll swap now now after I add a little bit of this see how it makes me feel I'm going to disappear, not permanently, but briefly, because I need to go to the bathroom, which I think is fair enough. So, first things first, this is definitely exactly the colour we were after. In all the ways, this is fantastic. Yeah, this is exactly what we wanted. This is gonna express the wave in all the ways we want it to. This is fantastic. Almost don't want to go to the bathroom anymore. Yeah, this is the yeah, perfect. Perfect. We're gonna keep pursuing that in 30 seconds. Will this be considered abstract? <clears throat> 
So, the definitions of art are so wildly subjective in different places that actually, if you want to consider it abstract, you're 100% right to do so. Um, I would typically describe it as impressionism. The difference being that with abstract, you try and take a subject matter or inspiration and then change what you see to actually be something else. And it's this actual battle of, of what's being depicted. The subject matter itself is sprawling. Um, in this case here, we're keeping it very accurate to the subject matter. Although the picture itself comes off as slightly abstract in the way it feels or looks, every bit of paint on the canvas was inspired by a shape or a tone in the guiding image. So with that in mind, there's nothing about this picture at all which is abstract. Um, the only reason why it would come off as abstract is because of the rudimentary tools we've decided to use to take that process on board. Think of if the brush got thicker and thicker and thicker, all of a sudden our ability to depict the image with that, with that sort of a tool would be, um, yeah, it would get even more abstract again. So we've chosen the size of our brush, chosen our picture, and the size of our canvas, and that's depicted how abstract the work's gonna become from a process that actually inherently tries to be perfect. Um, this one in the last, thanks Mizell, appreciate that. Now, give me a second. I'm gonna refill these and then I'll be back. One second. Josh, you're an absolute champion. Thank you very much. Um, speaking to that more in terms of rudimentary tools, I really do try and make sure I don't swap the size of the paintbrush too much. If I maintain the same size the whole way through, the art has a sense of, um, just a sense of, what's that French thing you can't quite explain? Hmm. I'm trying to remember about what that, uh, phrase from um, uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatball stuck in my head, the flinge dish defer. But it's not that, it's um, French. Benage et toi, I think so. Something which is that you can't quite explain. Um, right, I'm back again. Matt, you actually didn't miss anything because I disappeared for like how long did I run off for, guys? A minute? A minute. Probably a minute. There we go. Now, like I said, we haven't got long with this paint. Because as we add it, it's literally trying to dry on the palette that I'm painting on. Go with the spill. 
Go spill the coffee. Great name. Hello. There we go. Perfect. So we're going to add it on as fast as we can before it tries to dry on us. Step back and see what we should be adding this. Okay, so it wants some attention over this side. This is where this color is really going to come into its own. We just need to make sure we match it in the right areas. Here we go. Here we go, sneaking across here. Fantastic. Um, I had to leave because my groceries. Oh no, LJ. It's a disaster. Bear with me just for a second, guys. YouTubers, it's been fantastic, you lovely folk. Um, I'm going to cut you shy. And the reason I'm cutting YouTubers shy is I need to use that camera to take a time lapse. So you're all fantastic. I love you guys to bits. Thanks for joining in there. There we go. Bye. Okay. You have to excuse me, guys. I just cut the YouTubers off. Poor folk. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab my camera. Because time lapses are fun. Here we go. And this work is very fun to time lapse because of its sort of a uh, haloing style. <laughs> nah, it's just, I was just dabbling myself, just seeing how uh, YouTube Live works. Um, the one thing I don't like about other lives, and that I really like about TikTok, is the fact that we can paint in portrait. So the fact that the works, which are usually portrait shaped, fit better into the actual. Um, frame the picture, so that's a huge net positive. Whereas things like, um, what are they called? Twitch, Twitch, uh, Twitch and uh, YouTube, they all want landscape. And this is less appealing. Because then all you end up with is giant space out to each side, which isn't being used. We miss out on canvas. Ah, channel your ever in an ocean. Oh, why are you being pinned? I'm sorry. Um, so, to finish a piece, should take non-stop painting, about five to seven hours. This is where we should end up. But, Guys, when it comes to doing pictures, sometimes it's the wild west. I just don't know. I try to know. I try to predict it. But... Inherently, the process of painting is pretty chaotic. Especially with this sort of a style. And so if you're working with something quite inherently chaotic, the issue you're going to run into is that it's a very hard process to actually pin down and predict. So, I think one of my favorite pieces is actually a landscape done recently for a guy named James. And it's one of my favorites because with James's work, it's so cheeky. The brush strokes are just so cheeky in the way it all just seems to come together with these few little splashes here and there. There's so many colors, but it's just, I really like it. I really like it. It's a, it's a classic example of it. It's, it's, it's James's picture. It's, um, it's his inspiration to have taken the photo. But I feel a real connection with the painting itself, um, which lets you know that, yeah, okay, this painting has reached the right spot. This is good. Uh, 
come. Cheeky is the best way to describe it because every brush stroke explains what it's doing perfectly. Like it depicts what it's showing, but it's not in the right place or it's not doing the right thing, but it's showing the right thing. It's, it's very bizarre. It's very bizarre. So, I really, yeah. Doing what you want it to do, but also doing its own thing. That's, I think that's what cheeky means in this case. more transparent and that's going to be good because now we want to actually change the tones in a few areas without having a drastic impact on what we've already created. Now although the characters front and center in this work the character is not the most important part or well, it is but to make the character be accentuated right, to really make everything pop, we need to spend so much time on this wave. And we'll know we've got a wave that's correct when you see the crash and the energy of a wave coming over, but there's not a single brush stroke that goes like that, but it like, tries to curve it out. If we did a big curved brush stroke, that's expressionism. We've created the impression of a wave and all the angles are in all sorts of directions. Painted for friends and family. Do they have some new artwork? Of course they do. It's a real pleasure. And I've got artwork from my friends and family. Um, I actually just ordered a commission recently from a very close friend. Um, he's going to paint all of us from university. Not paint, uh, do it on a digital tablet. And I couldn't be more excited for it, guys. I'm, I feel absolutely blessed that first off I've got a friend who can do that and second off that he's provided the time to actually take up the project for me. Real magical. Lindo. Love Kelto. Oh, thanks mate. I'm glad to hear it. So still in the tans. We've added a bit of white to it now. And that's okay. I'm still avoiding even that texture get too thick. There we go. We'll go through here and through here. Now we're talking. And these couple of streaks up here. All right. And we're gonna keep going, just in here some more. That's the one. Love it. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Have you ever experienced with mediums other than paint? Look, I love some charcoal. Um, I used to like graphite, but honestly, at the end of the day, one of the things I really love about paint is that it's almost surreal in comparison to everything else. Paint has this weird thing, this thick liquid inside these tubes, which is coloured, that you mix and combine and then add to a canvas with a paintbrush. It's very bizarre, it's very fun, it's very, uh, well, I say it's primal, it's special in that sense. With inks, they're not as thick. They're not as, uh, 
they, they turn into something amazing. But the process of using inks or using uh, colored pastels and things, it isn't quite as alluring as it is to using paint. Paint's so alluring, guys. It's just, everything about it is weird and special. Here we go. But maybe that's just me. If you like other kinds of art, you're not wrong. And I'm not right. You're allowed to like whatever you like. But for me, I just feel like there's something really special about painting and raw painting, you know. It doesn't have to be on a canvas. I don't mind on any surface. But there's something unique about it in terms of the art forms. It feels like almost connected to where we used to do cave paintings and things tens of thousands of years ago. Have you ever done any photography or pottery? I like doing those at art college. That's fantastic. That's fantastic, Rich. So I personally done very little pottery. And I've done very little uh, photography. I've dabbled, but nowhere near to the extent that you need to to really construct a craft out of it. I like that it existed. I love that people do it. I'm a huge fan of that. But for me, it came quite clear. You feel it more. That this is the medium for me to be with. This is a good medium for me. What are my thoughts on digital paint? I love it. If you like it more than regular paint, you go for it. At the end of the day, if you can create an image that you love and others love it and you enjoy making it, go for gold. I'll always enjoy the, the process of physical paint and the process of actually using a rudimentary paint, rudimentary paint brush. These things will always resonate with me. Thanks, JW, you champion. How many projects have I taken on at once? So, at the moment, I'll take on four projects a month. And that allows me to really make something special out of them and allows everyone else to follow. If it takes me too long to do individual projects, you keep seeing the same work coming out over and over again. Thanks, Buzz. But I like a month. Four works, one month. You don't do one work a week. You chop and change. You build layers. You sometimes a work comes through really fast. You know, and sometimes it doesn't. You can sort of tell where it's going to go from I just sent you two galaxies. Oh, thank you so much, v Vinga. Appreciate that. Um, you can sort of tell where a work's going after its first layer. This one, was a, this one was unusual in the sense that after its first layer, it really popped. <laughs> um, insanely, and it's still popping. It doesn't mean it'll continue to pop, but it's in a really good place. So who knows? And, ah, oh, thank you, Jenny. Cute little star. Tips to build confidence. Marissa, tips to build confidence. It depends. What are you wanting the confidence for? Because you can't say confidence for the sake of confidence. What are you wanting to give confidence for? Ludo. Unfortunately, this one already belongs to an individual called Steve. 
and I can't wait to hear him, to hear him what he's got to say once it's hanging in this house. It's going to give me a real kick, guys. I'm going to really enjoy that. And thanks, Jenny. You fantastic person. Thanks for joining in. Um, so this one's not available, but if you'd like your own surf picture, there's one spot available for next month, and then I've got two in April. So if you'd like to get involved, send me a message via the link in the bio, and we can work out a surf painting just for you. What's cool about that, actually, is that if we live by the water, we can like maybe grab waves localized to you in some special way. Iconography nearby, like you can add this into the painting in some quite fun ways. Who knows? Only my fingers. Demo, you can definitely do that. But um, the issue with using only your fingers is that the movement of paint and the way it spreads is best done with a brush. Um, you can use rags and hands and things like this, but your hands can't hold paint. It'll, it'll just slosh it and smudge it. Ah, good, Marissa. Okay. So I want in confidence painting. What if I mess up if it doesn't turn out? So both those things, two things here, if it doesn't turn out, if it doesn't turn out, it sounds like we're stuck on the end result. The end result's irrelevant. Process is everything. Are you loving what you're doing? Are you loving what you're doing so much that the end result is not relevant? And I say this because imagine if all art, the moment you finished it, was destroyed immediately. How many people would still be painters? Artists. Would you be an artist if your work didn't exist the moment it was finished? If the case is no, I think, okay, so clearly I don't love this process enough. You need to love the process enough that the end result becomes irrelevant. The scales need to tip, and that'll help you get over that anxiety there. And then on top of that, there was another part. Not the, uh, this, there's another part, but I've forgotten it now, tripped up. My daughter wants to be an art teacher or a makeup artist. That's fantastic. Um, Good luck to her. I love that. Uh, confidence paint. If I mess up, oh yeah. So if I mess up, if it doesn't turn out. So I mess up. This is an interesting thing. If I make a mistake in a painting, what if I make a mistake? I've got to do seven hundred, seven thousand little brush strokes. And what happens if one of them goes wrong? This is true. This is a problem. This is part of the process. You're going to make mistakes. In fact, if you're going to do 10,000 brush strokes, I can guarantee hundreds of them are going to be mistakes. So how are we going to alleviate that, fix that, and deal with that? Well, one way is you can get hung up on every little mistake and spend your whole day trying to remove the fact that it ever happened. Or you can fix the mistake by diluting it with 20 not mistakes. So. Get your paint, and when a mistake happens, just ignore it. And for the next 20 strokes, put them exactly where they're supposed to be. And if you keep working through that, you will eventually end up with a giant painting that's not a giant mistake. And you'll love it. Is that paint on my neck? Yes, it is. Well spot. That's not going anywhere. I'll deal with that later. She's 16, she's a very good painter. That's fantastic. As long as she loves it, Jenny, that's the important thing. You keep finding ways for your daughter to really find fulfillment and enjoyment in making her art, not just in the results that she comes out with. And if she finds fulfillment and enjoyment in that, her, traje her trajectory in art can only be up. That's what I reckon. That's what I reckon. I just splash a little bit on myself there. There we go. Just 
to sneak around the side a little bit, guys. Bear with me. One second. Here we go. Back in just a moment. Just getting these areas very on the side here. Now it's all good. Just like that. A little bit more. Beautiful. Beautiful. There we go. A little bit more here. Fantastic. Awesome. Sorry guys, I'm back now. Cosmetology, fantastic. Do I surf? I've surfed three times. All with Shelby. It's great fun. Thoroughly enjoyed myself. Would recommend. Art is an inspiration. So I don't think there are any real mistakes. That's true. <clears throat> But if art's inspiration and anything can be art, then we can't say that mistakes can't exist in art and therefore mistakes must exist in art. So if mistakes must exist in art, then it's conceivable that you could make a mistake. Whether we recognize a mistake or not, if you could make a mistake, well, then we're arguing whether mistake matters. And so if we're using the terminology for mistake, then I use the terminology rather than saying correction or anything like that. I just say not mistake, which is a negation of the thing that you're trying to avoid. If you're trying to avoid something, don't think about it. You'll steer into it. So if you're trying to avoid something, do not that thing as often as you can. But the more you think mistake, 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 the more you're going to be surrounded by them. It's been asked you full time. It's a full time thing, Alex. Lovely to have you here, by the way. Hope you're looking after yourself. Let's sleep in here. Perfect. So, guys, this is an exciting color. For the first time in this painting. We're now adding in our yellows, which are going to come through as a warmish tan. The tans were already added. They were part of the um, bridging the gap between these reds and now these yellows. But this yellow is going to be the first color that says, hey, I know this is a wave, but I'm here too. And what's really cool about that is that the yellow is going to add the sun and the vibrancy to it. This is what we want. This is good. <clears throat> How's it so bright where I am? Well, this is, this is, this is, this is, um, Excuse me. This is New Zealand. In New Zealand, it's about lunchtime. So, about lunchtime in New Zealand, it's bright. There we go. Perfect. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Got a little something, something in my throat. Nice. 
the light there does look amazing to paint in. So it's very, very uh, fluorescent tubes on the roof. Now they do have a slight effect on the colour of the paint for its daylight, but I've got a lot of daylight coming to the window at the moment too. So that's handy. Here we go. Beautiful. This colour is really popping, guys. This is exactly what we wanted. Sneak up into this top corner here. The whole way around. <clears throat> and then through here. Now you'll already start to see, I'm going to pull this uh, picture off in just a second and show you. Now with the wave, loving the colours, thanks Jenny. Um, <laughs> two, young, young Jenny, but um, I'm going to step back and just show you this quickly. So this is with the uh, BDD yellow added to it. So we're going to go quite quickly from, oh, one second. We're going to go quite quickly from a picture that has um, fun movement to a picture that has real vibrancy and depth. So I spin this round here. You've still got the fun movement of the wave, but now we're starting to see all these colours clashing with each other in different directions through it. And this yellow is the first colour that's left in there, and it said, hey, this is a wave but it's also an incredibly vibrant and lively place that we're looking at. So, yellow coming through there. Now we're gonna tone those colors back with our blues later in the piece. But right now, we're just having fun with some really poppy things. Maybe green, there will be some green sneak in there. Green's gonna sneak in there. So is purple, purple's already in there a little bit. And so is, uh, orange but at the moment our focus is entirely on this yellow and actually to be fair in the real image if we have a look at it there's a lot of yellow in that you say no I just see blue actually the sun's bouncing off it and in a whole bunch of warm rays into it if you want to represent the warmth in this image the reason why this image looks like you get sunburn from it, you need to add those yellows in. Subtly underneath the surface, but you need to add them. All right. Back to our black and white. <clears throat> Here we go. I'll just move this back a little bit. Better. I'm trying to drop my paintbrush. There we go. Fleshing out a few of these little areas. Building it up bit by bit. There we go. Sneak in here a little bit. Nice. And then down here. Fantastic. I gave a picture of my daughter and me. Could you, if I gave you a picture of my daughter and me, would you paint it? Jenny, we could definitely work out if it's possible. What you want to do is reach out via the link 
in the bio. And we can see if a commission will work. We'll work at a size, where you live, and we can go from there. Sounds pretty exciting. Every painting you do gets better. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Appreciate that. But that's not always the case, guys. There's this um, actual reality where sometimes you'll get caught on a painting and it just won't come together. And you'll do layer after layer after layer. And you're wondering why for some reason it's getting worse. It's because with painting, it's not a gradual process that gets better and better and better. Sometimes it feels like that, but actually it's more of a um, turbulent up and down process. So rather than starting here and going to good, it goes better to worse, to better to worse, to better to worse. Sometimes like this, sometimes like this, you know, or sometimes like this. There's a million different ways it can reach its conclusion. As long as you know with your process, it always trends upwards, even though it's going all over the show, that's fine. But very, very unlikely that your painting process is linear from start to finish. How many colors do you use in your palette? Honestly, every single one of them. I love all the colors. I love the fact that I can have all the colors. That just beside me here on the ground, there's tubes of every color I could ever need. And if I want more of them, I can head down to the store and fill it up some more. That's fantastic. <clears throat> um, it depends on the size, Jenny. The best thing to do is to jump on that link and tell me exactly what you've got in mind and send me through the picture and then we can work out a plan together. So many factors come into it. I can't read out that name, Nine Heart Nine, but thank you so much. Appreciate you. And hopefully as we keep adding paint, it'll keep trending upwards. But look, don't be surprised. If you come back and look at a painting, and you may like it less. This process is chaotic, guys. It goes in all directions. I'm trying to craft, but sometimes you get beaten. Come back the next day and have another go. And keep making that painting trend upwards. Wear drawers anymore or wearing shorts. Um, look at chops and changes. I personally like my uh, I like stubbies. They're a Kiwi classic. I don't have a pair of stubbies right now though. Which is silly. Maybe I need to get some stubbies. Thanks, Davy, and thanks, Lisa. You're both champions. Um, I'm not quite sure. We don't really use that term in New Zealand either. Let's have a stand back. Uh, I wish I could say be careful. That's it. <laughs> Cheryl, you snuck in here. How you doing? I was actually thinking before, and I was like, I've been here a while. Where's Cheryl been? And now you're here. Fantastic to see you, Cheryl. Hope you're looking after yourself. The shocking pink. Yeah. So that pink's going to keep popping. Um, I really like how I really feel like the surfboard has this movement in with the wave. But look. <clears throat> I say, anything can happen. This painting is chaos, guys. And the wave, by nature of it, the wave doesn't have a single part. There's no part of this wave 
which is any form that you can grab a hold of and say that's something we can really accentuate to prove it's a wave. It's a whole bunch of shimmering colors and shapes. And so the wave is pure chaos. So to depict a wave, we need to lean into the chaos, which means we can end up anywhere, which is part of the fun, to be honest. I'm good, Seb. How are you? Um, I was here, but shot out for a bit. That's all good, Cheryl. Good to see you. Speaking of shooting out for a bit, though, I'm probably not far off doing the same. I need to go pick up some boxes for shipping. So these works. The boxes are all finished. Thanks, buddy, Bart. Do you do painting full, uh, full time, Jenny? But um, the boxes are all ready to go for this work. Craig and Scott. And, 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 and. Um, this work, Craig and Scott, uh, the family portrait, and two other works. So, I'm very excited to go to a big pickup. It's gonna be pretty fun. I do have paint on my neck. I do. So I do make mistakes. I definitely do. People are like, how do you keep the paint off your clothes? And I'm like, I don't. I don't. I miss occasionally. And I've missed. In this case. Here we go. a little bit more yellow sneaking in there. All right, there we go. <laughs> Cheers, Cobb. Speaking of French girls, if you do get excited about that phrase, there are t-shirts available by the link in the bio, which is pretty funny. <clears throat> um, where's your jandals with those socks and of sneakers? Yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm in an unorthodox outfit today. It's just hotter than it normally is. So, we're doing some silly behavior with our outfit. <clears throat> okay. That's in a good place. Right. Our paint tray needs a refresh. I need to go pick up some boxes. But I will be back this afternoon, probably for a late night session. And so if you're around for that, that'll be fantastic. Um, oh, thank you very much, Jason. Yeah, we, we're getting there. We're getting there. Play by play, we'll get there. Anyway, guys, look after yourselves. I will see you in probably five, six hours. I have a whole bunch of boxes in my car at that stage, which I can't wait for. Wherever you are in the world, have a great day or a great night. Thanks, Cheryl. Catch you later. Hydrate. Great point, DJ. Great point. All right, guys. Catch you later. Bye.